All right, it's a busy week uh, for the markets. The Fed kicks off a two-day policy meeting tomorrow with stocks uh, near new highs. Joining us is David Bonson, Managing Director and CIO of the Bonson Group, and James Camp, Managing Director of Strategic Income at Eagle Asset Management. All right, David, we'll start uh, with you. You have counted how many cycles of tariffs, easing of tariffs, market goes down on the tariffs, it slowly rebounds. Actually, it doesn't rebound immediately. It sort of stabilizes and then rebounds after we think that uh, maybe some positive things are happening. And, and that's what we're still vulnerable to at this point? I, I think we're vulnerable to it. This one does sort of feel like it's possible that we might actually get some kind of a more lasting temporary resolution in that paradox is on purpose. I think that this time the political implications are much more severe. When you go back to the first couple of times this happened, the president still had a lot of time to work through it and so forth. But I think this time maintaining the strong economy narrative into the election year is very vulnerable and he seems much more motivated to get it done. The difference is China. I'm not sure that China is operating from the same point of weakness that they were six months ago, certainly a year ago. Uh, They seem less concerned about their vulnerability. but their vulnerability is not in doubt. Quite a backup in rates uh, after uh, the events of the weekend, too. And it, it had already bottomed and the tenure had already started moving. Where do you think the, the, the next uh, resistance level is? you think we get back above 2% near term? Yeah, Joe, I think this is a, a complete redo of, the, of the, the two other periods we've seen 150 on tens. We've had these sort of call them mini pauses, mini recessions in this expansion. And so the 150 level to us was the line in the sand for the bond market it held. Uh, you certainly could see a 2% level. You've got to get the funds rate inside of two to get some slope in, in the yield curve if that's if that's the situation. I think that's exactly where the Fed is going to go. They're going to ease tomorrow, or, or pardon me, on Wednesday, maybe one more in October. And then you, then you see some positive slope to the yield curve. And a lot of those sort of technical things that concern people about economic slowdowns go away. So I'd expect a, a two-year, 10-year, and I'd expect a 175 funds rate. Mm-hmm. Does that matter to you, David? Oh, it does. I mean, I think that in terms of the liquidity that they were taking out of the market in fourth quarter of last year, that doesn't seem to be at play right now. There's a, a plenty of liquidity in the market that is, you know, there for risk assets. But I think as far as the shape of the yield curve, the thing that I'm not sure I agree is that it can hold when the Fed brings the that's short rate say. down. It's not just the Fed that's moving this No, way. it's... You've got it's, the Swiss National Bank. Well, got and the bank Germany, of Japan, the entire and ECB. The bank of England. Everybody's moving this week. That, that's You're right. You're going to hear more from them, too. That's right. And I think that that those amount of, of assets pouring into the long end of our curve is going to continue to hold that yield down, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Hmm. Um, so your strategy at this point is, 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 do you care about growth? Do you care about value? Do you buy the dips? Do you, I mean, go for yield stocks? Yeah, so we're, we're not yield stock people. We're growth of yield stock people. We want dividend companies raising the dividend over time. And you look at, like, the events of this morning, Chevron and Exxon. See, we would never buy something because we think there's going to be a, a shock to, you know, oil supply. Chevron and Exxon are 5%, 4% yields. These are companies that have grown the dividend through far worse economic periods than we're going through right now. I think it's sustainable dividend growth from two really good companies. You just get an added benefit that they happen to be somewhat defensive in certain geopolitical situations. So you would have bought them before this even? Oh, we were heavy owners of this before them and had been buying heavily throughout August. Absolutely. I think back to the debt issue. Energy sector debt was 38% of the debt in the S&P four years ago. It's 20% of the debt in the S&P now. There's been significant deleveraging. And the issue about this becoming an inflationary shock, I just want to point out, this is a huge story. Oil is right now where it was July 10th. Right. where it was May 24th. I mean, $59 is not exactly what you would think of as a world panic around oil prices. So I don't think that we can anticipate any inflationary lasting concern out of this. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Uh, David, thank you.